Call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delorier. Resolve the agenda for the March 20th, 2018 regular meeting. Council be received. Discussion? All in favor? All in favor? Duck. 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 Motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, seconded by Councillor Morio. Was all the minutes of the March 6, 2018 regular meeting council and the March 13th special meeting council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. So we have the first of two presentations by Johnny. The first one is representing the Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to our council meeting, John. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Warren Genick, Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce, Welcome joining us this evening as well. Um, we've got a few items on our list with the Chamber of Commerce to uh, discuss. But first of all, congratulations, Julie, on becoming a uh, grandma. Thank you. For those of you who didn't know, twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> Times two. Yeah. Times two. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into it uh, um, right quick and hopefully be out of your hair, but we do have some questions um, with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, first off on our list, we wanted to talk a little bit about um, the water crisis, and I know it's over and that ship has sailed, but we just wanted to say thank you on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce on a job well done and, and you know what all of that looked like and all of the situations that had to be dealt with. Um, we um, just want to say thank you for doing your part in doing a, a really good job with that. Um, yet a little disappointed that we didn't um, host the event together. I think that uh, we were hoping to show a little more transparency and working together as far as the Chamber of Commerce and the Town of Swan River. Um, so uh, having, having said that, we're, we're still kind of, some of the members are still um, out of the loop as to why that got cancelled or why it didn't didn't go forward. Um, anything to add on that topic? No, it's just uh, <clears throat> yeah, very uh, very happy to see how things were handled, um, and we would like to have an opportunity to share that with the community to thank everybody together and, and get a little more information for the community as well as to what exactly was behind everything, get as much information as we could because lots of questions. I mean, it made national news, so uh, it would be interesting to know. But uh, yeah, so. Kind of be, uh, yeah. So I guess closing okay. on that, it just. Uh, Councilor Sack has a question. John. Sure. Go ahead. Just a comment. I guess it's not that we didn't appreciate what you guys were trying to do. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to speak for all of council, but uh, the timing of it, Councilor Jacobson was kind of our spokesperson, and he was going to be away for a long period of time, and we had felt that the period of time, by the time he was going to be back to have this event, it had already been almost uh, not quite a month but but close and for somebody else to give the message we felt it would have maybe given mixed messages and added a whole lot of confusion to it and then I guess maybe possibly we weren't understanding the whole format whether there was going to be alcohol served or no alcohol served it didn't seem like there was going to be a, a question period where citizens could question and I think we would have wanted to have you know, more of a question period. I guess maybe we should have brought that up to you. But I guess the timeline, I think I like the idea when it was going to be like right after the incident, when it was fresh in everybody's minds, uh, waiting the length of period that it was going to drag out to. Not that we didn't want to work with you or feel that uh, we were against you or anything like that, but I just think the timing or having a different spokesperson would have muddied the waters more so than anything. For sure, and uh, I mean we appreciate your your comments on that. Um, I don't think that we've had a lot of questions in regards to that topic in a while, um, and I don't think that we need to do anything further with that. I guess just for the curiosity of, of everybody else, all the problems are resolved with that situation. I'm assuming, correct? Yeah, we're still working on it. We're still working on the pump situation. Yeah. Okay. 
Derek, you want to just let them know kind of what where we're at? Yeah, the plan is uh, basically to to redrill well two out of you know there's three wells out there and it's inspect well one and well three. That's phase one of the project. Phase two will be the upgrade, adding the mon monitoring equipment, which will help us determine problems a lot faster than than would happen. <clears throat> so going forward, Swan River isn't vulnerable to having something like that happen again. Well, we always are. I mean, there's yeah, failures, there's a, but uh, yeah. right now we've got two of wells, two of three wells working. Yeah, no, it's good. Well, like I say, it was impressive to. <laughs> I struggled my land. Uh, I drilled five wells on my land. <laughs> still nothing, and I still haul water every day. Um, so it's uh, not fun. So when you guys are all panicking about not having water, it's like, hey, I deal with this every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I guess like once Derek and his crews has that replayed new well dug there, when that's all scheduled, the town will be more than willing, um, speaking for myself, to share what we found, because there's still investigations in some of those wells that need to be determined yet. And once that work's done, I guess we could probably look at the information to share with the chamber and whoever to mm -hmm. answer yep. some of the questions that might be out there, because we still have questions. Um, right. that are not answered yet due to work that still needs to get done. So. For sure, and I guess that's the main focus of our uh, bringing that up again is just to encourage um, you know the cooperation and the continued working together of, of both the town of Swan River and the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we feel that you know we're part of the same community and definitely want to work together and we're not not shying away from any situation, we just want to be able to work with you to the um, to the best best result for everybody, right? Um, so that takes care of that one. Moving on to the next uh, next point on our list um, is the business tax. I know that we've had a series of discussions about that prior, and um, we're just wondering what that um, is looking for for the budget. I know that we've had a few initial conversations, um, but just want to see if we're allowed to discuss that or talk about it um, as far as the business tax. What council sees with that, what um, the rumblings that we are hearing about introducing a hospitality tax in its place, um, and just getting some general feedback from our business owners on what's Okay, I can, I can talk and council can fill in on the business tax. Uh, first of all, I think it's according to our budget, you know, we haven't finalized the budget, so nothing is final yet. But uh, we're looking at maybe a small reduction in the business tax, but it wouldn't be eliminated. Just exactly how much it would be reduced, like I say, our budget hasn't been finalized yet, been working on it continuously over the last, the last month. So, and the other one on the hospitality sorry. tax, uh, council has talked briefly about that, but uh, maybe I'll leave it to Jason to talk about it. He's, he's with RISE and he's more into the economic development side. So all we basically is we just threw it out there. Um, definitely we'd want to work with the chamber and maybe the chamber would want even want to be, you know, made the big major uh, steering component on this and maybe it'd be something you'd want to work with but we just threw it out there briefly I know RISE we've been working on tourism apparently there's some other uh, municipalities that feel tourism isn't maybe uh, valued anymore and maybe we should move on so that that very well could be a piece that could be gone very quickly in my mind the tourism piece um, we need for it to be successful there's volunteer groups, Valley in the Mountains, other groups, um, the work that the Chamber does, uh, the employee we have there. I think there has to be a dedicated person for tourism, a paid salary, because the, the, the people doing it in a volunteer aspect are going to have time to do it completely. You're going to need one person leading that, leading that ship. So with that, um, I don't know where we go with it. The hospitality tax, to me, would be something, and this is just my opinion, and it might not be the opinion of council, would be something that would possibly 
they could use the funding from them at some of that to fund this person because hospitality tax or fee should be used for filling those hotels, the restaurants, bringing people to the community. And that's what it should be used for. It shouldn't go into general coffers. It should be put into a separate account for tourism, for activities, for drawing events to the community, for paying the wage for that person. Let's work in the tourism to take it off the chamber's plate. Uh, that's what I feel. And, and I don't know if that's the right way of going about it, but definitely there would be some consultations. I know there's one hotel owner had phoned me and was very displeased and, and doesn't think it could fly here. I'm not in the hotel business, but I see people coming from out of town. Every time I leave Swan River, I go to a hotel, I pay it. Personally, I don't shop around and say I'm not going to stay in Winnipeg because there's a there's a tax, or I'm not going to stay in Bradley because there's a tax. I'm going there, I'm going to pay it. And we definitely um, respect that, um, your opinion, and I think that most of us feel, you know, uh, you know, the same way about the, the activities that need to move forward. Um, just a question, I guess, in regards to that in the reduction of the business tax, um, in that, that we're reducing it currently and the hospitality tax not coming into play. Is there any room in the budget or is anything budgeted this year for things like tourism? Um, is that something that is in your budget or is that something that would be looked at in the future with, with the hospitality tax? I guess it's hard hard for me to say for sure. I guess you know, as far as in our budget goes, um, I don't necessarily feel the town of Swan River should fund all the tourism. I think mean, it should be either a valley-wide project or coming out of a fee, say, from the destination tax, possibly the hotel tax. Um, I believe the valley should be paying for it, and I think using it as rise and in, in steering that ship, I. I still uh, am against rise dropping it because I think we're, we're getting close, but we're not there. We don't have the final plan in place, but I'm only one part of one municipality, you know, going to make that decision. And I respect your opinion with the, um, with the basis on that the whole valley should pay for hospitality tax. Um, fortunate or unfortunately, I don't think that there's hotels in, um, or restaurants in outside of Swan River that are going to contribute um, no, I just to the same to, to tourism I think everybody in the valley should be supporting the tourism because there's a lot of the largest tourism pieces within the valley are outside Swan River the town you right know, with, with golf courses Thunder Hill uh, snowmobile trails so not a lot of these pieces are within the town but yet I don't think the town should cover the costs fully of this person being paid and staffed to Right. I, I, I totally agree with that. Um, there's no doubt about that. But looking forward um, into the, the views, I guess, of a hospitality tax for Swan River as a whole and saying that um, we wouldn't or that you would like to see somebody there full time and not using all of that, all of the funds for the tourism side because we're expecting, you know, the outside communities to to put into that what happens to the rest of that revenue that's created from the hospitality side or from the hospitality tax. What, what, what we talked about. I'm oh, sorry. I thought about putting it into, a, into its own fund and it grows. So if there is a big event, uh, summer games or something, they would, that's when uh, the monies would be used for tourism type initiatives, not for paving Main Street or for, uh, you know, other general revenue items that we have, we get a, we get uh, basically Talis One River. We get hit up here all the time. High school rodeo wants money, uh, golf tournaments want money, all these special events where there's uh, gymnastics groups coming to town, hockey tournaments, basketball tournaments. These people are all looking for monies to try to host these events. When you know there's going to be a lot of people benefiting from them, so hopefully to attract these people. There would be a committee or somebody that's going to be in charge. Maybe it'll be two chamber members and a 
and a, and a town councilor or members from all the municipalities that will sit on a separate board that will decide where these monies go and what they're used for, not the town of Swan River. That's so, where I was going with my conversation that we, what we briefly talked about. If it's still a, a ways away, we would go to uh, the hospitality tax. One of the issues was it would just go into general revenue of the town. We said that that would be what we need. would have set up a committee maybe of two chamber and two town councillors or councillors and they would make recommendations as to how that money would be spent. Okay, and then I mean that's fair and, and going back to the initial delegation that we had in regards to the business tax currently um, when we proposed the idea of exactly what we're talking about um, you know the committee of both a, a tourism side and the chamber of commerce side and the business tax going, going towards that um, not and that was a three-year we presented it as a three-year project um, and looking at that you know to avoid the hospitality tax in the beginning just to see you know um, that three-year pilot project to see exactly if we could do that alleviate all of the stress from the town we would take it on as, as the uh, chamber and tourism side um, incorporating Valley in the Mountains for the tourism side the chamber would be focusing on chamber of commerce activities using the funds from the business tax to fund both of those activities um, and yes being able to to give that money to you know a board deciding what that would look like as well as having the reserve fund in there when we presented it as well for the bigger projects coming to town um, so we have presented that once to you know talk about exactly what we're talking about um, but then we reduce the the business tax so I, I guess the question is is what we want to be on the same page we just want to know if, if go ahead I'm not against your proposal and I, I think there's probably a, a split in the council uh, I'm going to speak for, for the way some council thinks is that maybe not all the business community is behind it we're taking the dollars the tax that we're taxing and then we're giving it we don't have full support of the business community. That 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 is one part of the struggle. But I'm not saying I I'm not against your 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 uh, proposal. And I'd be willing to bring a, a resolution to the table uh, for the proposal and, and see where it lays but um, so I guess to comment on your comment the uh, the lack of support with that from the other business members so those business members who are bringing concern that that um, that they don't want to support you know the tourism the chamber side they're perfectly fine with their business tax going to general coffers at the moment I, I, I'm just asking I, I mean I don't know the answer to that question but I'm just throwing that same question out there if that if there is truth or I, I mean if there's you know um, a battle moving forward to something that would benefit the entire community um, you know from every single business um, dispute on that but no dispute on it um, going to general coffers currently I, I, I'm just I, I, I have some concern with that comment for sure I definitely like to have a conversation with that business owner for sure so I guess that's um, so I guess the answer to my question I'm, I'm not even sure that we have an answer. I have an answer currently, to be quite honest. So, Johnny, you're you're, you're proposing that the town of Swan River turn over the business tax to the Chamber of Commerce that's that's currently being uh, taxed right now in, in a two or three phase uh, allocation or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it over time. I guess when we introduced the pilot or the project, the, I mean, and I didn't, didn't bring my notes on that pilot pro or the the pilot project that we were presenting was a three year project, um, and we would be the idea was to be as very as transparent as we can with council and and with the rest of the community as a whole, um, and without with the outlying um, uh, RMs and and to show what we can do with with this funding. And yes, I agree totally that um, you know not all of Swan River should be funding the tourism side. But if we were to introduce that, and at the end of the day, show a report and say 
this is what happened within our community. We're now going to cut our budget, you know, the town dollars, and set more into a reserve for other activities and have outside RM money coming in. That would only grow the pot um, for attracting other events into the community, large events, because you have capital now to do that. Um, yeah, and it was the, going back to Lance, that was a three-year project that we, we presented with the business tax. Um, in the knowing that it's going to be reduced or eliminated, I guess, um, and now we have a reduction, but we are no further ahead, essentially, in, 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 what, in what we're aiming for. Have you had the opportunity to meet with the other councils and see what their thoughts of what that concept is? With the other RMs? Yeah. We have not. We wanted to see what the decision yeah. or the decision with the town would be first. I mean, we need to we need to start somewhere, and knowing that there is a business tax out there that was in the process of being eliminated, we wanted to, uh, I guess, essentially attack that first and see what council um, had in mind. Council. Uh, so basically, we've been dancing around the question for the last umpteen minutes here. Uh, so basically, we know we the town collects the business tax, and we know where the money's going. Okay. Um, in your proposal, which that we that you presented to us, uh, if we turn that over to us, that would mean that that business tax that we're using where it is now would have to be increased taxes to collect that back. Because like, if we're taking credit business tax and handing it over to you um, to the chamber, the money that that X dollar value would have to be made up somewhere to use in the operations where it currently is being used. Point blank, that would mean a tax increase. But like, we're, so, we're having the discussion of reducing the business tax uh, already. So right, so, yeah, so, so right now, the business tax, um, as far as my memory, if it's being reduced, it's being reduced very little this year. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong. 5%. So. Um, 0.5% or 5%? So. so right now, it was a. Uh, 1.4 percent we're going down to 1.33 so it's a five percent reduction right so it's not a significant reduction okay so um so like as councillor sacco says uh, the proposal that you brought forward it's great things like that just right now without putting on a significant tax increase of so recollecting those dollars through different avenues uh within the current town structure um we would have to make up those dollars somewhere if we turned over those amount. So that's where the, the hospitality tax is coming in, is that if we're gonna be giving out X dollars to that project, we need to collect those X dollars somewhere um, to make up that difference for the internal operations. So not that we don't wanna shoot down your plan or stuff like, but from my point of view, fiscally, uh, without putting a big tax increase on the rest of the, like the entire community or the businesses to make up those dollars, at this point in time in this budget, it doesn't, see, it doesn't mean that we can work on other solutions or next year if the fiscal climate is different, but based on right now on the fiscal climate that we got right now, if we handed over the current business tax dollars to you, we'd have to regenerate those other, that same amount of dollars to come back into the budget from somewhere else. Councilor I think Johnny's looking at it a totally different way, like the businesses are paying the tax, mm -hmm. so they want to take that money and use it to, to bring money back mm -hmm. for those businesses. I guess long and short, the Chamber wants to know an answer, so I'd be willing to put a resolution on the table to support this project, and then if it gets voted in favor, then great. If it doesn't, then they know where they stand. And, and, I, and I agree with you, Jason, that we are looking for an answer because um, you know, we can we can all have this same conversation moving over forward, and moving over, over and over again. Um, what our situation looks like as as far as the Chamber of Commerce, we're the Chamber of Commerce. We're not um, tourism. Tourism is not what the Chamber of Commerce is about. Um, and I and I, you know, in part of that proposal as well, you talked about um, what it looks like for the tourism and the Chamber of Commerce when we if we move to separate which is is very very close because we don't have um, 
we need ways to regenerate income for the Chamber of Commerce and for the tourism and having you know that extra revenue is exactly what we need to to build upon um, having said that the Chamber of Commerce is at the point where we will we will explore the idea once again we've had this conversation but explore the idea of, of getting rid of our current building um, that's you know our days are spent so much with um, the tourism side of things and we want to be it's not that we don't want to be a part of it we want to take it on we would just want a more um, involved approach and funding for that tourism side as well and it's you know we're prepared to take on the work and prepared to to look after both entities um, you know at the best of our power and the best of our skill for the three-year project and I mean if at the end of those three years if you know we look back or we look through it and say this isn't happening let's do something different then we're all all for you know the next step moving forward um, but what does that look like for tourism for the town uh, or for for the community if we're not involved whatsoever I mean we have an empty tourism building who's gonna fund who's gonna look after funding the that uh, the building, the maintenance of the building, who's going to fund the, the current staff person in there currently? Are we going to, is, is the community going to sit with an empty building um, with nobody in it, no tourism center until we decide, you know, what we're going to do with that business tax or are we going to implement a hospitality tax? I, I guess th those are the questions that our board will be discussing um, without, a without a decision from from council. No, Lance. So, uh, Councillor Sackle's bringing forward this resolution. Basically, I think that, if I'm correct, is it something to do with your recommendation? I'm assuming. Do we have a copy of that? That was presented to council as a delegation. Yeah, and you're saying yeah, that. Okay. I think because three, I mean, three months, yeah. four months ago. November. Okay. November, yeah, it was November, early November, maybe that we presented that we had the same con or the conversation of the of that proposal. Um, so I guess looking at it, that we're you know that budget is close to being finished. We are kind of at the point of wondering how did our uh, how did the working together with the town and the chamber of commerce fall off the edge so bad that we're you know back to having the same conversation I guess and I, and I understand that we're you know all busy and and you know we all have other agendas that we need to fill and we're not pointing fingers we just want to know how do we work together what does a, that look 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 like moving forward and what does council see for these two organizations I guess my take on the whole thing is, is I'm not opposed to tourism or anything like that, but I, I'm against the business tax again, and I've been one of the big pushes to lower it, but we had a hard time even lowering it 5%. It's something we're going to have to wean ourselves on. We're, to frame it a different way, we're basically addicts to that money, right? we got to wean ourselves off it because to, to take a big seventy grand hit, $75,000 hit in one or two or even three years, that's a huge hit to the taxpayers. We had a, we had a hard time getting 5% down this year and next year I hope to get another 10% off. But ideally, I would like to, if we could eliminate entirely and let the businesses decide. It should be, if, if we truly believe in tourism, we should have no trouble making the argument to the business community and they should have no trouble giving it voluntarily if it's something that the, the community truly wants. The seven of us shouldn't make that decision for the business community. That's that's probably where I stand on it. But I think that I, I can speak for council. The crunch is here for council as far as our budget is concerned. We worked a number of runs through the budget, and the last one we went through, uh, I'm not sure how we must have taken how many thousand dollars out of the budget. Well, well since since mm -hmm. the, well, the, just the last go round, we took another hundred thousand dollars out. Of, and we still we're still going to have a two percent increase in people's taxes so we'll have another run and go budget go through the budget and, and what we're trying to get it down to a reasonable tax increase and if we remove the business tax that means we got to 
find that money on the other property taxes. So, so the, the crunch is on the tax. So I, I welcome the resolution to come to the table and, and we'll see where it goes from there. I'll even second it to get it on the table. Can you please read the resolution and just make sure it's the name of the to, and you know we we are aware of, of uh, you know the number crunch. It's the same like any other business business operation. We understand, um, you know. How, I you know I can speak for myself. I can speak for the rest of the businesses. We know uh, what it's like to to budget. We know what it's like to pull money from you know somewhere else to um, make things happen. Um, you know, and, and we're not. We're not opposed to any any ideas that council has. I guess the question is, moving forward, I understand that um, you know council can't make the decision for tourism for for everybody. But what does that look like in the in the budget as far as tourism? If we if we are reducing that business tax, what are we putting in place for for tourism to attract you know people coming to this town? What do we? Can council shed some light on on what that looks like as far as tourism, or is there anything in place currently for for tourism or economic development? I guess for that matter. In my mind, that we were funding tourism in a couple of different ways. Like yeah. we're putting money into Rise, and Rise is one of the things they're working on is tourism, okay. and we're thinking the chamber is going to do tourism. I probably need one one focus or one place to put that money as well valley in the mountains, valley which, is, mountains. which is a member of parkland tourism four entities jason i guess uh, I, I agree with everything that's been said at the table and everything that johnny is saying um yeah it, it's a tough decision it is a tough decision i think um the chamber has has a great idea, and I think it's uh, something that I'll support. But um, by the sounds of it, I don't know if we'll have the rest of council. But I I believe in tourism. I think it's a great thing, and it's a, it's a three-year pilot project. It's not set in stone. Um, I think the chamber could do great things. I guess, and and they are the the pulse on the business community. So. I don't know. Yeah, there is there is a lot of things that we are funding in it, but this might be the answer to funnel them to one final spot. And, and I don't know where the start is or where the finish is, but I think this is the start, and it will finish uh, some of these other projects as far as tourism goes. With with rise, we had uh, um, I missed the meeting, but there was a, another RM that definitely doesn't want to support tourism anymore. So I'm assuming for that. For that entity to keep going is we're probably going to shift gears uh, you know when tourism is going to get dropped so that's going to be one part that we're not funding tourism valley in the mountains uh you know the chamber said that they were going to you know try to work with them and, and get that to be one group so i don't know Councilor uh, jacob seven Councilor. I understand we, we've talked lots about this and I and I understand what you guys are, are talking about here but the, the resolution we're talking about here right now that's going to come to the table you know, with this three-year pilot project we're talking about transferring a hundred percent of the business tax right now Councillor Morio alluded to that that leaves a big black hole in our budget and I and I don't personally I can't support that for that reason if it if it's if it's a phasing thing that we could talk about, maybe this is too early to get jumpy on this. You know, maybe we need to talk about it a little bit more and and, and serious. If it's maybe if it's say ten percent of it or something like that, we but we need to look at our books to really see what the, the, this really means to our budget without tying ourselves to something that it's not going to be very appreciated by our local taxpayers. Councillor Delorean and then Councillor Sack. Um, I guess I I know uh, and I hope the request got passed on you, but Council had requested the possibility of doing a survey to the business community. Had you guys undertaken a survey at all to ask the the business community what 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 they wanted done with the with the business tax at all? Um, I, I I had never seen any feedback from that. But Julie, had you passed that on? That we were I think you were going to ask them. Yeah. 
So that, that, that would probably make my decision a lot easier if we had some feedback from the from the whole community as a whole. Councilor Sapper. Yes, I know you talk about a black hole being there with the with the money's not there, but why should the business community have to be taxed to support other pieces that they're not you know what I mean? Like what what are they getting? I guess either axe the business tax or give it to the chamber and let the chamber I totally agree the business tax I, I would like to see it eliminated, but it's going to take, if we did that all in one year, oh, I don't know how we would, I wouldn't be sleeping at night. It, it's going to take time. So I, I guess commenting on that, um, on all of the questions, uh, um, going back to has a survey been done, um, what does that look like? Um, and that's exactly it. If we put out, out a survey, you know, just talking amongst you know, very few people, a, a simple survey saying, what would you like to, done with the tax? If you ask anybody, no matter what the subject is, if they want to contribute to it, they'll say no. I mean, there, there's, I, they, in my mind, a, a survey uh, that vague is very, very pointless. If you were to say, uh, would you rather have your, your business tax dollars going to general coffer, or would you rather have your business tax dollars going to um, tourism and economic development within the community, well, there is the answer is going to be pretty straightforward. I mean, the, but I mean, if it's a survey that council wants to see and, and see those results of that, you know, we'd be prepared to do that. Having said that, I guess um, in the budget that we're talking about as well, we in the past council has given uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Ten thousand dollars per year, or in and around that amount. Uh, so, what does that look like for this budget? If we were looking at that, you know, our com or the Chamber of Commerce wouldn't be looking at that ten thousand plus the business tax. We'd be looking at the business tax. So now we're down to that black hole that was seventy thousand dollars. Now down to sixty. Um, you know, looking at all the things that are currently funded. Um, by council in all the different areas, you know, Valley in the Mountains Rise, et cetera, et cetera. If you were to put all of, the, all of those things back into perspective and look at that business tax, I think we would see that number being a lot smaller than, than it currently looks like. I, and I mean, I don't have the answers to that, but I'm just, you know, discussing those things that we're all trying to fund with so many different organizations and so many different avenues, if we were to combine them all into one, what does that number look like? Councilor Moore and Councilor Jay. So, so, so that's an option that's, we, that's never been discussed is looking at all those piecemeal grants that we do, like the chamber, all those stuff. And then that might be something that we, have, we could look at. Like, is, And if we didn't have to expend those grants out, then that's all part of that business tax fund, like I said, yeah, exactly, that black hole is now getting a lot smaller or manageable versus, but we uh, currently, uh, the way I looked at it, that was uh, not a, not considered because we still anticipated those $10 or $10,000 ch chamber grants, $2,000 for the lawn trips. All those were still being expensed and this would be, it was never considered that all those would get reined in and then brought back and just that one dollar value sent out and then all these other smaller expenses would disappear. Like and I and I think that so, oh sorry, I think there was somebody else before I respond to I forgot where it was. Right here. Uh, actually yeah I, I echo that. Uh, I think that you know if, if that's the case then we need to look at the whole thing and see what that number looks like to give us a better perspective of how it will react, you know, in our numbers at the end of the day. So are we talking about dropping it a rise? Is this what I'm hearing? Well, if that's, we got to look at the whole picture, right? I, if, if that's going to be the case, if that's what you're proposing and, and saying that we need to uh, look at all the elements that, are, that we're talking about as far as tourism goes, then maybe we need to look at the whole thing. And then definitely that whole perspective for me will change for sure. And I guess responding to that, I'm not here to, to, to close entities on uh, you know on 
specifically closing them because yeah Johnny came in and he's closing everything let's give it all the, the chance that's not what I'm here to do believe me it's just to funnel the things that council is currently doing into a more manageable operation and a more effective operation well, I think the discussion is a good one and, and you know I, I don't want to jump to something too quick without looking at the whole thing but maybe that's what we need to talk about and I think that's the view that the chamber and the tourism side had the whole, you know, moving forward the whole time is we're not looking at, you know, gouging, taking that business tax and saying, no, we still have that, we want that too. It's not what we're about. We want to work together. We want to come up with the best possible solution. Um, you know, and maybe down the road that business tax will be eliminated on, you know, the good faith of what we've, what we've created. Um, but looking at those numbers, I, I mean, I think I think that we'd be, we'd be pretty pretty close in you know funneling everything into one and looking at those numbers. I'd be interested to myself to look at those. I guess with the resolution sitting there, maybe we should hold off on it at one more budget meeting and have a look at some final numbers and mm -hmm. then have to it. There's a rise meeting rise tomorrow night that it might answer part of our questions. Might answer part of our questions. <laughs> I guess maybe hold that till next meeting. I like that. Make well, the decision well, the a lot easier. <laughs> we got 25, 30 grand freed up from Rise. That was my question. What do we give Rise? About 20, what, 24,000? Okay. So there's 27 there. Plus 12 the there. Chamber, and then the 8,000 here and there, and all this stuff. Um, yeah. That black hole is suddenly not so. Not so dark. So, so that might be the disconnect that you were made of thinking, but it did the light bulb on that avenue didn't come to our meeting. And then of course, you know, there's those projects that, you know, come to town but or to to, to council and it can be pawned off onto, you know, the chamber and the tourism side, relieving pressure from we'll add that to the resolution. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 because if we're funding somebody to be full time, we want them to be yeah. busy. busy doing exactly that. You know, it's the same thing looking at it, the Chamber of Commerce side. You know, we want to be able to delegate the tourism side to our tourism board, you know, and focus on what we do and what we do really well. And I think council is in the same boat looking after the, the, the things that matter to the town. and. And you know, not saying that those don't matter, but having another entity that looks after that, relieving pressure from from both both areas. Do we have anything else to add on that one? That's not. I think I'm going to end this conversation now. It's a good and, discussion. Uh, we'll we'll see if the mover and the sector agree to table the motion that we present. Yep. Council. Okay. So having moving moving on to the next point on our list. Um, uh, it's been a, brought up to our, our um, to the chamber a few times. What can council tell us in regards to cannabis and the new laws and, and selling it and, and businesses wanting to open up up shops and, and things like that? What? Okay, the, the way it stands with the provincial register, uh, you probably saw the news tonight. The regulations come out uh, from the province today, just this afternoon, of where where. It can be used so any public places or your outdoor thing at your restaurant it's not going to be allowed basically you can only legally smoke it in your own home I, I, yeah that's okay. part of the answer and the other distribution and sale of it will be controlled by the province the province uh, they put out uh, proposals a request for proposals and they, they were looking at the meetings we we're at they're looking for a major distributor uh, that has distribution points across the province. So if Councillor Delore and I thought that we were going to get a license to sell pot, it's not going to happen at this point in time. The province had indicated to us they wanted uh, a retail outlet for 90% of the population of Manitoba within being within a 30 minute drive. So that, but just running those numbers roughly in our head means that probably a licensee wouldn't come in this morning, but just, that's just me talking now, but just running, if it's not 90%, we make up a, a large area where it would be half an hour drive from the next closest place. Right. And the province did want us to say yay or nay, whether we would allow a distribution center in the town, Swan River, and we did pass in favor unanimously that we would allow it. Mm -hmm. So, 
So I guess the, the question is, is, is the town or the council, the town has no more say uh, or has no final say in any of the decisions, it's all provincial. So when we have somebody with questions, we don't steer them to town council, we steer them to We have provincial. say in zoning as far as, you know, signage, how close to Schools where we want to have it, yeah, that kind of thing, but we have not passed any type of amendments to our zoning bylaw, but that is, we're working on that, so I, I wouldn't want to say that this is what it is until that's passed, but, but that's going to be a municipal responsibility will be zoning, you know, and, you, and can't, you can't have it next to a, a daycare or whatever right. thing. And that's, is, is at this point, that's the only control, I guess, that counts, or that the town has. Yeah. So we steer them to provincial levels. Yeah. And that's acceptable. Yeah, as far as it goes, like we did ask the question with, um, I think the uh, Minister of Trades and Enterprise, was it? And he said that basically they were looking for, we asked him if somebody from Swan River could submit an application and they said well basically we're looking for they were looking for one or two or possibly three big players that were going to supply all of Manitoba just because of the tight timelines that the federal government came up with they don't want to have to regulate 150 small businesses that are going to be selling cannabis where they can regulate one or two big players and have it all they said maybe in the future they'll allow it to smaller places but there again, you have to refer them back to the, the provincial side, and that, that's what we were told as a... As and, a I, and I guess that's exactly the questions that we were wanting to know, is where do we steer these people that are asking those questions. So that's perfect with that. Um, do we have anything else to add on that one? I don't uh, just put the Right. Um, so that brings us to our final point, and then we will get out of your hair. Uh, we did submit um, a letter of request to Julie in regards to our AGM of the Chamber of Commerce um, in regards to the two items that we did discuss. Um, and we are hoping for uh, representation, you know, to shed some light on those two topics. Um, so, Julie, I think we'll talk to you about that at, at some point. Okay, perfect. And then I guess the other th last and final thing is how um, thoughts and discussion of uh, how what council sees, how we can work in the future better together. Um, and I guess that we're not looking for an answer for that right now. It's just the discussion of, of you know, the Chamber of Commerce is happy and pleased and excited to work with the town and we hope that the uh, the same feelings are shared with the council. Most definitely. We, you know, we appreciate you being here tonight and we work with you any way we can, uh, realizing that you have uh, people you're working with that are asking for things at the same time. We've got budget restraints and the taxpayers that we're sort of concerned about also. Of course, for sure, and we definitely respect those, those decisions that you make, for sure. All right, so that's everything with the, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. My delegation. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. That hats off my next uh, question. Um, recently moved, and I recently bought another piece of property, 24 Riverview Drive. Um, and we were just looking at it. Um, we bought it in the winter. We never looked at the outside outside yard whatsoever haven't seen it um, we just have some aerial uh, an aerial map and photograph um, and I did contact Julie in regards to looking at possibly purchasing some of that green space um, to the east of that property and just wondering what that looked like and how we can um, move forward or not or not move forward I guess the idea is that we um, are throwing around the idea of building a fence and we want to know if you know if there's some opportunity for purchasing that green space um, behind there what council feels about that um, and I know that when Julie and I spoke it was you know to talk to the next door neighbor beside us to the right um, where there's where there that green space is um, I guess having having said that um, they're neither, you know, they don't have a care either way. I don't think that they'd be interested in in purchasing the property. I don't know, but, you know, a letter from council might be, you know, 
the answer if that's the way it goes. So I've been just looking for some. Do you copy that drawing? Yeah. So it's it's the only one. Um, I'll just kind of, or that it's the only copy I have. But uh, so the piece of property is this one. It's, this is 24 Riverview, this is the property, and what we were anticipating is either, you know, a, a lot going straight out that way, or cutting it this way, and what that looks like. You can pass that down, but this when is... When I looked at that chunk, looks like just an anomaly from a survey or something, that when they put those lots in there, there happened to be a little chunk left over, so they called it a public Which neighbor did you talk to, this one? Yeah, and this is... Um, they don't seem to care didn't seem to care. I don't think that they were they were too optimistic that that would happen either. So here he is just looking straight out this way or straight like that to cut this Anyway, it's something the council will have to look at directly, John. I can't give you an answer tonight. For sure, and then I'm not looking for an answer tonight. For sure, it's just the discussion, what that looks like. Is there anything I need to do? Is, I don't know. I've never, I've never actually You'd looked have at to file or, or, or send a letter to council to actually request to purchase it. And we'll take okay. it from there and see where it goes. We'll see that. Yeah. And, and what does what does purchase I, I what does price look like what is how is price determined I I guess those are the other questions I have I mean if it's valued at a million dollars a square foot am I gonna write a letter not likely unless of course somebody wants to buy a restaurant <laughs> make a formal proposal yeah. would you make us an offer, offer on it like mm -hmm. identify what you're looking to purchase Identify what you're willing to pay. Send us a formal. So, and I guess the question is, how do I determine what that space is? Do I go out physically and measure it? No, it should be on the survey map. You should just contact me, and I, I can tell you the process, of our process to get it out of the public reserve, and what's that going to cost us? And then we can just go through that whole process on what it's going to take for you to buy that property. If you give me a call, we can sit down. Okay. Your Chamber of Commerce uh, meeting is is on a, is on the third Tuesday in April. Seventeenth. The seventeenth. Yeah, that's a council regular council meeting. meeting. Um, yeah. What time? What time does it start? Maybe we. I'd like to we can send down. somebody and. We are. Uh, <laughs> it should be indicated on the email that was sent. Um, I don't have that in front of me. I have in front of me. It just says the evening of April the seventeenth. Yeah, we're shooting for 6 30 for Thank you. For 6 30. Appetizer, cocktails and appetizers, and then the formal agenda. We don't have anything set in stone for our, our agenda. Um, so, I mean, we could schedule somebody in, you know, whatever time is convenient. 6 30? Yes. We schedule the council meeting. Not, I don't think that that's something I want to be a part of. <laughs> at this I won't point. be. I won't be there for that council meeting either. So we need to be careful with quorum. Okay. So uh, talk to Derek about okay, the property. Okay. And he'll awesome. give you an idea of possibly what it might be worth. Okay. Yeah. Even oh. questions that we ask. Okay. Just get your head there. Yeah. What you're going to need. Okay. You have to know. So the so I guess the question. Would be, contacting Derek so that is a possibility the council would be interested in in moving that property from reserve and to we'll I guess is, look the, at it, yeah. is the question that I want to ask I don't want to go through it if if that's not even an option of, of let, let Derek tell you what the process is and then you'll see if you want to go through it I guess because okay. there's a process to get it legally out of public reserve and into okay. even a saleable state okay so then if that goes to a saleable state does that mean that it becomes I'm not auction. sure you have to have a public hearing. Yeah. So any of the neighbors in a certain distance could come and express. So then if we do put it up, does that mean it goes to auction, public auction, and anybody no, no, can buy no, it? No, we can sell it. Okay. On and now, you go through the process and talk to Derek and see what that looks like, because there is a fee to take it out of mm -hmm. public reserve. We find that out, and then what would happen is 
you bring the proposal to us, we, we'd send out a uh, notification to the surrounding neighbors and they could oppose it or say, yeah, they have no problem with it or say nothing at all. And if there was no opposition, then it would just okay. be granted. So just offer you a million dollars and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I just want to make sure and verify that that's clear, that if we go through this process, nobody else can buy that. The value of that land is with business taxes. So <laughs> <laughs> how long is this meeting on the 17th? Okay. Um, d depending on how big the agenda is, um, and like I said, the agenda isn't finalized, but um, in the past it's been an hour and a half, two at the most, I think. Can you set the invitation to okay. me? Thank you. To, to council. Which Julie's going to talk to you about at some point. Your agenda. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you very much. So, with the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sapp, will resolve that resolution 129A be tabled. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Okay, under correspondence, you have a letter from the Animal Protection League looking for a corporate sponsorship. I don't see any resolutions. No. Why not? Put one on the table if you want to fill. Uh, the next is a letter from Manitoba Municipal Relations regarding the Planning Amendment Act. For uh, basically for information for council, councilor glory. I guess one one the, the big thing I notice is uh, increasing the variance threshold from ten to fifteen percent. That would be very nice. Given that, that would be a nice change. Appreciate that. Okay. The next one is a letter from the chamber of commerce. We just discussed about their AGM on April seventeenth. I'll try to attend. I would like to go too. Well, we'll time there. Six thirty, so it might be just a quick in and out kind of thing. And I'm not I'm able. To, I'm going to be away on April seventeenth, so you guys have to make sure you have quorum with Odin. Or do we just go for an hour? That's it. Yeah. So I guess they're looking for somebody to speak on those two issues. Can we reply that somebody will speak on those two? <laughs> okay, unfinished business, Northwest Regional Library budget. Councillor Friesen, do you have anything to on that? Um, do we have a copy of it in here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I guess I had a question, it's much better, but on the payroll expenses, we had Wages aren't, we're not having a wage increase, but we've increased the uh, budget amount by uh, four, $4,000 and the, and the actual amount by uh, almost $10,000 from last year. So why the increase in wages if we have no wage increase? Does it not say a wage increase at the, at the beginning? It often mm -hmm. says a 3% payroll increase. But yeah, 3% payroll increase. Huh. Well, you I, see that? I don't know if that would be, if I'd be in favor of that, considering the rest of our uh, people probably won't be getting a 3% increase. Okay. But I'm just one vote, so. Well, I agree. Gotta, we're on a different mission right now, so. I did tell them. That would severely undermine our position with, uh, with the rest of our negotiations. So no wage increase for the library staff? So do we want to put that resolution 
There's a resolution to approve that budget. And that table that. Well, we're going to vote against it. I'd rather vote against it. It'll send a message. Okay, so we have the resolution moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Morio, resolve that the 2018 Northwest Regional Library budget be approved. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Defeated. Okay, spring flooding, the emergency measures letter to residents. Or council read that. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I think that's good. good. Okay. Yeah. Discussion? Yeah. Uh, because of what we just went through with our uh, water crisis, I really think that we would be foolish if we didn't start making plans today, which include that letter. The letter is very important. Where we sit down and make some general ideas, what to do, how to handle if a flood came our way rather than wait till we're told the flood is here in three days. I think we should be being proactive right now, deciding who's going to be the media guy, who's going to look after volunteers, who's going to look after using sandbags. And I see no reason why that we couldn't do that. Councilor Jacobs. I agree. We had that one meeting here last week or a week ago, two weeks ago. But anyway, um, I think maybe mentioned to Ken that all council with that whole uh, whole thing to have a discussion about this maybe possibility event or future events and get ourselves organized and that might require you know a sit down for two to three hours whatever whatever it takes yeah so and people could really work on set up yep yeah. for sure thank you okay the next one is the airport commission the amended uh, budget uh, at Council's request, Councillor Sackle uh, brought up the information about the, our concern about the budget and uh, basically if it came to a vote we were going to lose it but we were going to convince them that they actually removed ten, about $10,000 worth of stuff from that. So thank you. Yeah, it looks like they're taking 10000 from community service. Yeah, we had a fairly lengthy discussion and uh, definitely we did not have the numbers to to get it any better than we could um, but we did we did reduce it as much as we could we used uh, using some monies for some one-time repairs I guess to kind of pull out of nominal surplus for the for the time being I think I still feel we're gonna end up uh, bringing in some extra cash again and we'll have to look at the budget again next year and see because I think it's gonna I think it's gonna come over because we're out still we we ran January February March with all these helicopters from Bipole 3 that are buying up fuel like crazy and I still think we could have dropped it to our reduce uh, recommended amount but the flavor wasn't there for sure and there's appreciate a, your guys efforts there's a new uh, business coming to the community I believe we're going to be working with them and they're going to start a scrub, uh, crop spraying business and so we have a we have a committee started to work with this fellow and Councillor White is on the committee, and uh, I think Councillor Beer and, and another person to work hand in hand with this uh, individual. He's a uh, he's moved to the valley now. He has some family here and plans to uh, start a crop spring business. So yeah, looking forward to that. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a used crop spare. Cheap. I don't sound like a lot to me. The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolved that the 2018 Song Valley Municipal Airport Commission amended budget be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolved that the Song Valley Municipal Airport Commission amended. 2018 levy in the amount of 22,521.20 be approved for payment. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Superintendent Works Report. Okay, 2018 financial plan. Budget. 
I'm much happier with uh, with where it's at. It's at the two percent that I that I was willing to accept. Um, the thing that I'd like to uh, possibly bring up, and it has to do with the financial plan, is I've, I've come to learn that the District Recreation Commission is sitting on about a hundred thousand dollars. We just kind of break the airport commission over the coals for, for, and they actually have in infrastructure. The airport commission doesn't. Or, or the, air, the airport commission does. Rec district doesn't have any infrastructure. Now, I would, I, th I think we will probably have a hard time getting that money out of the of the recreation commission for the same reasons we had a hard time getting it out of the the. Uh, Airport Commission, but what I would like to propose to the other two partners is perhaps you know we have we we're putting sixty grand into uh, repairs for the hot tub at the pool. We're putting we have we have major capital dollars that are going into our rec, rec facilities. As do the other three uh, other two municipalities. I'm sure they put capital dollars into their into their uh, facilities. I propose that we possibly talk to our uh, partners. If we can't get the money out, perhaps we could submit. Uh, a one-time thing, some of our of our expense, our capital expenses, and get uh, get the uh, district to write a seat, write us each a, a check at the same proportion that uh, our money went in, as long as it's going towards rec facilities. Great idea. So, I you know I I draft a letter. I draft a letter to our partners and see what they think, and draft a letter to the commission. The commission can have a. A meeting it's going towards recreation I mean we're putting mega dollars into rec facilities and I realize the district is not about facilities so that makes me question why it needs to sit on a hundred thousand dollars but we might have a fight on our hands to try and get that money out of there perhaps it's easier if they knew that it was going to rec uh, recreational facilities not just in general yeah not just coming back to the town for the you know, everybody thinks general revenue is going into a black hole. We know that you know general revenue goes to pay for service, but if it's yeah. going back into facilities, which we have no shortage of, of capital yeah. costs, so that's that'd be a, a, probably a final proposal that I would want to make that might affect our financial plan. You know, so I I think we should run that by our partners and see where that leads. Okay, because every municipality has capital. On recreation. Yeah. Now, what I've found in the last two meetings I've had, I had a conservation district meeting last night, and I think even at the RISE meeting, our one municipal partner that we were dealing with with emergency measure is talking. In both cases, they brought up the idea we need some sort of way if this organization falls by the wayside of dividing up the assets and the money that are. Uh, for, for which organization? Conservation. Oh, just talked about it because with the new legislation coming out, you know, in the year's notice, you can opt out of the conservation district. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, with RISE, with one of our partners uh, threatening to not be there next year, maybe uh, there might be an occasion for the, those assets to be divided up. So, so and I mean, yeah, I don't think either one has anything officially now say that that is dissolved, how you divide up whatever assets you have. <coughs> you probably should get on. Uh, um, and, you know, I may be speaking on terms because I don't actually sit on the uh, recreation district. I just uh, happen to come by this information. But I, you know, I wait for Councillor uh, Jacobson to maybe make comment on that. If you think it's a bad idea, or if the district has a plan for that money, I mean, by, by all means. Well, we. we I, don't, I don't want to speak on a term, you know, because well, I. And that's why I think we have every right to, to speak about it because it, it is a document that we all have opportunity to look at, and and as far as what that accumulated surplus is there for. I'm newer on that uh, board, so I, I don't really know what those funds are, are held there. And it is and it's a usually just, of money. It's just the surplus from the previous yes. year's budget. So accumulated. There, I believe it was an accumulated of about 10000 from last year to this year. So I guess you we can provide or, or request. I'm not too sure how many strings are tied to that mm -hmm. surplus. I really don't know. So that's something that we would have to uh, talk about for sure. Okay, well, I'll draft up a letter then and okay. give it to you to okay. send out. <coughs> Derek, as I put Derek. Uh, just to note some major changes that have happened since our last budget meeting is uh, the Manitoba Water Services Board has no money left for their uh, 2018 construction projects. 
So we did have in the capital budget uh, half of the well site project and half of the water treatment project uh, coming from the Manitoba Water Services Board and that is not going to happen. Is there no Building Canada money or anything anymore? That they do sit on the, like they're the ins on where the infrastructure is uh, sent out through the Secretariat and they are saying that there is a program coming. Uh, they're pretty sure that 40% will be from the feds and they haven't heard from the province yet but they're thinking 30 and we would be on the hook for the other 30. Of course, we're gonna uh, apply for those, but in the meantime, I did have Terry move uh, the entire well project, $500,000, uh, and half of the water treatment project, $176,000 to borrowing. Uh, that would leave uh, $494,167 in our water and sewer reserve, so if council like there's the option basically to to take that 176 out of the reserve and, and have the whole water treatment project uh, under our reserve but uh, I did move half or sorry all of the well project half of the water treatment plant to Moral just to keep our reserve up for our future projects but I'm sure we'll go over this in detail in the next budget meeting but you guys should know that that change is made. And we do have every intention of uh, applying for those grants. <clears throat> okay, so we'll have to set up a date for another budget meeting. So the next scheduled meeting is on April. We want to meet earlier on budget. On, on April 3rd. On April 3rd. Um, on, the, on the budget, though, on page 13, I see. Uh, uh, Tractor, uh, the tractor cap for rec. Derek had generously offered to uh, put that on his on, out of the reserve, but I see it's still coming out of general fund. Yeah, that was if a swap could be done, but once we purchase that van in January, mm -hmm. Brennan will be using that brand new van for the stuff he uses his half ton for. So that will put us back in the exact same spot meeting no but then can you use the orange van like the orange van now becomes the old van i guess yeah i never thought of that but we you know i don't know what you or the or the green van still runs i mean until the wheels fall off well i wouldn't say that it would entirely pass it's if it got in a major mm -hmm. accident so can we leave these discussions to the budget meeting yeah So it'll, what time do we want to meet on the third? On, on third. which day? On the third. Before our next regular right. scheduled council. Five thirty. Any time after five thirty for me. Full sports till six. Six is fine. Six. Okay. Six o'clock. Six forty-five on the third. Six. Six. Okay. Friday. Six. Third of April. Mm -hmm. Be Before that, if we could uh, shift that back from to the reserve, Correct. that'd be great. But we have another issue. Oh, we do? Yes. Uh, you may as well tell us, we can think about it. The public works half done. We had 90, the 93 go down, now the 90, 98 is locked out. And I can get into detail in the budget meeting of why those two trucks can't go back on their own. At least one. Okay, so we'll leave that for the budget meeting too. Okay, any questions on his report? If not, then we have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Jacobson. Resolve the Superintendent Works report we received. Discussion? I have one. Could you write down 13th and 3rd Street North, the corner? I lost my car in it tonight on the way here. Yes. You Excuse probably me. know that. Is it ahead looking for it? Thank you. All in favor? Okay, you have the bylaw enforcement officer's report. 
Any questions to Julie? Yep. There's a, a quote in there, much greater percentage of tickets being paid through this method. What does that mean? It's getting 10 more than usual or 100% better? I, I worry about those nebulous statements. It says using being able to take the picture and send it to it, we're getting a much greater percentage of tickets being paid. I think we're getting uh, about 99% of the tickets being paid Being now paid? There's a discussion. Thank you. Probably 50% before. Yep, great. Thank you. Okay. All in favor of the resolution? Okay, why one more comment? Can, oh, okay. um, can you let them know about a car on 9th uh, being the 200 block, I believe? Oh, yeah. The black car parked on the sidewalk for like two weeks now. He's on the sidewalk. Yeah. He's told me about this one. Yeah, he's on the sidewalk. I have for two weeks. Okay. It's like a black Hyundai or Kia hatchback looking thing. Yeah, it's supposed to come. There's other cars that are there. You can still see the greater pass from when it's snow. So that's been for two weeks now. And there's no tracks through the, the snow bank with the greater left. So if he can do a drive, it's easy to see. He's definitely seen it. He's yeah. talked about it twice. Oh, yeah, it's parked right on the sidewalk. It's bizarre. Yeah. He's asked me about it. I just haven't had a chance to take a look. Okay. Um, you have the what are our reports? Super Nine. We're still going. Seven point three. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, you have the management meetings. Any questions? Did you Did they might show up? Mine didn't show up. Yeah, I got them. Okay, that's right. No? Okay. We'll go down to the bylaw for election expenses and contributions. The only change is the increased amount on okay. the motion moved by Councillor Mori. A second. A question here on uh, 2.1 where it says registration of prospective candidates. It's uh, wording that says registration or registered candidates under section 93.3 must be completed. There's no, I'm assuming there's no 93.3 in this bylaw, so they plan to refer you to uh, the municipal act. So, so would you, or the elections act, so would you need to clarify 93.3 like, you know, of what act you're referring to? It's not. Good. Yeah, I, I had checked the wording on the um, in the guide, and you know to make sure that it was still good. Um, but I can certainly add that in there. So you know what, sure. like what section of what act of ninety three point three are we talking about there? Okay. That's all I think. So the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolved that bylaw 4, 2018, being a bylaw of the Town of Song River prescribing election expenses and contributions. You read a first time. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolved that Council is followed by hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check 22135 to 22194 for a total of 174,227.62, and payroll account from check 4177 to 4188 for a total of 113,157.83. Discussion? Councillor Sackle. Um, 0022161 Patterson Egg, some sort of a John Deere part. I, it's for a thousand. Some odd dollars. It's for Patterson Agriculture Limited for a thousand fifty six ninety. It's not on Terry's list. No, I no. checked there. I was hoping <laughs> it was actually.
applicant was for a pivot pin and filters. Pivot unit number? Um, no, there's no unit number there. They were, they were both, uh, as far as I can see, um, Troy's signature. I'm guessing it would either be for the, the old John Deere when we use for boulevard cleaning, or it's a wreck mower that they're fixing. But I can get that to you. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Morial. Um, it's in our CFO's explanation, but it's like check number 22148 to go Edgar. It's his name. And, and um, for, our, for our washing machine at Veterans Hall. For hundred and twenty dollars. What kind of washing machine do we get? Maybe that's the fix. They have trouble with the the uh, dishwasher. Dish so. I'm just thinking from Lana's report. Is that, is it fixing the dishwasher? I'll just check here. Sure. I don't think we have a closed washing machine there. So. Exactly. It's saying a uh, portable washer for washing uh, mops and broom parts. Who bought it from him? Um, yes. Any other questions? All in favor? Carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White. Resolve the following building permit applications be received 418, Derek Pool 196 Avenue West, renovation $18,000. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White. Resolved that Mayor McKenzie be authorized to attend the Conservation District Boundary Meeting being held in Dauphin March 22nd. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White. Resolved the Chamber of Commerce 2018 membership in the amount of $84 be approved for payment. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. <coughs> the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Freeze, and resolve the Council authorize a grant $2,500 to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce for the Flynn Flon trade show. Discussion? Councillor Memorial. Uh, did we want to put this on hold as to be if we're going to be discussing all this uh, stuff in the budget to go? One thing to the next. Councilor Sackle. I think we should pass it and then if we decided if we did vote in favor to get rid of the business tax, we would just minus, minus this portion it. out totally just so agree. that they can. They need it this now. this they is a very important yeah. thing. Oh, it's I agree. Okay, I see. All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved at the Valley in the Mountain Tourism, Parkland Tourism 2018 membership in the amount of $2,500 to be approved for payment. What about this one? Same. Same. Discussion? Councillor Friesen? No, I was just going to agree. Okay, all in favor? Carry. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolve that Hannah Kitch, Caleb Balco, and Brittany Moore be hired as casual customer service reps, effective March 20th, 2018. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Are you swimming again, Councillor White? Pardon? Are you swimming again? Uh, I, I, what did they, you were supposed to be there, I haven't gone since. The motion moved by Councillor White and seconded by Councillor Sackle resolve a Swan Valley Crisis Center 
audit and financial statements for the year end March 31st, 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Sure. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sack will resolve a thousand dollar annual grant to the Swan Valley Crisis Center be approved for payment. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sack will resolve the Swan Valley District Re Recreation Commission 2017 audited financial statements be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Reports. Councillor White. Uh, March the 8th, uh, we had the MO meeting. But we have to try to uh, do a post-mortem on the, on the water crisis. I think we did a pretty good job, but I think I want to be stressed the importance of having these meetings before. We didn't know what was happening. But when there's a possibility of what happened, I wonder how potential this spring with all the snow, we have, to have a, we have to have the plan before it happens and we can have a, a template in, in place. Uh, I was concerned that the lateness of that meeting, that in fact it was <coughs> after, I, I didn't think, I was concerned that not all the players who were present during the crisis weren't present at the meeting because it was during the day and most of those people had to work. So I think we have to tighten that up. Then later on that day, we went to the Riverview condos, got a, uh, a nice tour there, and that's all the issues and what a wonderful potential for our community. And the budget meeting on March 13th, uh, I'm not, not going to bring up too many Swan Valley sport fishing, but uh, they're looking at having 600 people come to our community to raise funds for fish, which helps us all. On April the 28th, for those of you that are doing nothing on that Saturday, <coughs> and we're starting at 5 p.m., not 6. That's a big change. We've never done that in the 32 years of the dinner. Then I went to the Syrian Refugee Committee meeting on the 14th. Uh, the young man still needs a job. He's having difficulty getting a job. Language being the number one barrier, but there are others. March the 16th, I went to the HARM meeting where they're trying to look at ways to help people who are drug addicts in our community. I've asked that entity to come to our council. I think they may have picked the day, they may not have, but to talk about the issues of giving free needles to people paying people to, a, to attend meetings and uh, how that reduces disease spread and transmission, it's, a, it's something that, unless you sit for a meeting for half an hour, that I, I, ha I had a lot of difficulty understanding much of it. So they, uh, I think Neil Ives is going to come, who's the, uh, one of the main players in that world. Then I had the luxury of enjoying St. Patty's Day in my Ukrainian hometown. And uh, we had a lot of fun there and I survived. And the budget meeting tonight, and I compliment the whole team for everything they're doing to make the budget to try to be better for our taxpayers. <coughs> Thank you. Councilor Friesen. Uh, last week I had a meeting with Settlement Services. Um, I'm doing that well there. If you have any questions, let me know. Then uh, the same night was the library meeting, and uh, Kathy put this together if anybody wants to see it. It's the uh, transaction detail by account of our property taxes and our water bills, which of course we all know have gone up, 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 which is why the budget for the library has gone up, up, up. And um, what was that thing we went to Glen with uh, Ag Society? It was, a, it was a phase was two it? of their uh, strategic plan. Action site. plan, yeah. yeah. Anyway. I was at that and they were talking about how can we promote our Northwest Roundup so people will stay and go to it, what do we have to do to make it um, attractive to everyone, not just people who go to it, I guess. Um, one of the suggestions was could we start back with decorating the Main Street? Just, do any of you remember when we used to decorate Main Street? Oh yeah, with all the wood, and we'd drop off the wood, and all the stores would look like yeah. Yeah. Does so that appeal to you? Yeah. Like we would have no objection to doing that as a town, right? I have no objection. Fine. Awesome. Yeah, let's do that. I think so. I have no objection, but I know we used to get the slabs. I believe from, from spruce, from spruce, yes. or from uh, real uh, cottage down there. But I don't know if they apparently this um, pine pine river. Somebody has a small. 
sawmill out of Pine River that um, <clears throat> Wendy Black was going to check in. So if we can get slabs, then that's what we're going to do. Uh, they talked about having a um, blocking Main Street for a half day to have a barbecue, just to promote the rodeo, so people don't think, oh man, i got to get out of town, the rodeos, and, you know. So if you, any of you have some good ideas, or any ideas, um, let me know and I'll run it by them. Just on that matter, sort of related maybe, I mean, in my desk I found a bunch of old pictures, and one of them, I had a flashback. Remember one time, they used to have a sale where they would close off Main Street and the businesses on Main Street would put their stuff. Yeah. All River Days, yes. And you know, that was Chamber. That was Chamber of Commerce. They used to do that. Tables out on Main Street. Tables of stuff set yeah. out on Main Street. Rides. Yeah. 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 Was that long ago? No, when I was a kid even, I remember. That's a that's a lot lot no, but that's a good idea. Like we, that was one of the other things they talked about. Maybe even having a street dance down on Fifth. That's nice and smooth now, and incorporate the Legion into that. And okay, I'm done. Yeah. Sounds Council Sackle. Uh, too much to report. Had the airport commission meeting last Friday morning, and uh, yeah, there's going to be a new crop sprayer in town, and employ some people and provide a service for the valley, which would be nice. And um, got a rise meeting tomorrow night. Should be exciting. That's it. Councilor Jacobson. Uh, other than what was mentioned already, I had uh, had the chance to have my first uh, Swan Valley Communities at Care meeting. So uh, quite an ambitious group there that uh, deals with a lot of things, and I'm still trying to get it all covered because there's so many things they're talking about that I had really no clue what they're talking about. But they they, they talked about you know, assisting, you know, families and, and kids and all that. So they they do a lot of good work, you know, this triple P program that if you have kids and all that you'll understand what that is and this uh, uh, guiding good choices program that they have too that they're spending a lot of time educating uh, young kids in the schools and all that. So that's been a pretty good program, I think, so far. So they're looking for more people to volunteer and, and help with uh, with that. So it's uh, interesting anyways. And as time goes on, I attend more meetings, and I, I will get a more grasp on exactly what everything means and all their acronyms and everything that they're talking about. Um, and then, of course, last night I had uh, our uh, DISREC meeting, and uh, we finalized the uh, budget for 2000, or financial statements for 2017 and like uh, Councillor Gloria brought up there is a sizable amount of money that's sitting in, in the account that uh, sits as accumulated surplus. Do, they do have part of that is sitting as a GIC uh, about $50,000 so they do have a fairly healthy uh, budget here and, uh, and so forth so exactly what is done with that I guess that's something that uh, I should have been asking last night but um, what can be done with those funds is something that we will uh, discover in the coming weeks. Councilor Glory. I had a planning district meeting last week, uh, and the only thing of interest, I guess, to, uh, to town is there's a couple of lots that are right on our border at the south end, just past Stan Anderson's place there, uh, that are going to be through the uh, actually, it's actually Swan Valley West that's doing the application. They're applying to pull that out of uh, uh, agricultural and turn that into rural residential. So I guess we can stew on that and think if, if the town has a position or if we don't care or I guess uh, you'll have to let Councillor Sack and myself know if, if the town does have a position. Uh, there's going to be a public hearing I think in April sometime. If you know where Larry Cabelka lives? that property, kind of that empty vacant field all the way up to where Edith Galischuk lived. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess just to keep in perspective, we have a lot of lots of town for sale that these will be competing with, so, I mean, but uh, it's, yeah, it could be neither here nor there as well, so I, I'll leave it that with you guys and let, let Councilor Sack and myself know. Other than that, just uh, putting lots of thought into uh, the budget and making sure it's palatable for uh, for the ratepayers, because uh, I would not want anybody to have any type of sticker shock, so we're going to make that sticker as small as possible. And not so great. I had um, 
couple things. Uh, we had this site meeting with one of the local uh, developers here and homeowners regarding uh, some of the uh, infrastructure issues that they, they're presented with and they gave us a presentation and came up with solutions which was good to hear uh, on their part that they just didn't come with a problem, they came with actual solutions uh, this time. Um, which is good to hear. Uh, tonight we had a personnel committee meeting um, to, to deal with, with our uh, upcoming negotiations with our union. I um, also want to put out uh, two shout outs to two uh, Thomas Warner River residents. Um, the first one is uh, our local MLA, Rick Wolchuk, at his induction to the Football Hall of Fame. That um, I see that on Facebook that he's got, so congratulations to uh, Rick Wolchuk for, on that. That's, uh, I guess, a prestigious thing. Um, a second shout out is to um, a local resident here in town again, Tara Steffen, um, who also, uh, I got word, we all know that she had the highest uh, paramedic examination mark in Manitoba. Um, also just got word that her mark was also the highest in Canada. Wow. wow. So, um, so it just goes to prove that uh, works for you. We work. She works for Mountain Health. <laughs> yeah. uh, she's also for you, yes. <laughs> and she's also one of our local firefighters. <coughs> also, so uh, it just goes to prove we have talent in the valley that's uh, in there. So a shout out to, to those people. Um, so it's a follow up on, on that. So, but uh, a significant achievement to be highest mark in Canada. So. Good for you. Thank you, Councilor Moore. The only thing that I have that hasn't Councillor Moore. I just want to make one comment on Councillor Moore's comment on the uh, land or on the uh, water issue down by River, Riverview there with uh, Cronan's property. Is does your numbers in the budget reflect doing anything on that? Uh, I mean we're reconstruction. Yeah. It, so that that's in here already. Okay. Okay, that was one. The only thing that uh, wasn't covered by Council like last night attended a conservation district meeting. And the conservation districts are stirred up a little bit because the province has a plan to realign the conservation districts more to match the watersheds, and that's catching something off guard. They're worried about the download from the province. And that's sort of what the meeting in the uh, Dauphin is about, where the province will outline or ask for suggestions on realignment of the conservation districts. And I didn't realize until I was there last night that we have a, a project proposed, apparently the rocks got dislodged, some of the rocks got dislodged on the, on the fabric uh, during the flood. I've never ever seen it before. It came up on the list of proposed projects and when I was through the town of Swan River, uh, the fabric has been, with the flood, they moved some of the rocks at the, along by the 6th Avenue lift station. I don't know how. Where oh, well that started, that started a long time ago. Okay. That's the uh, first time I saw it last night. Couple of them have got There's a big yeah. But again, There's they've, got, they've got a number of projects as long as your arm and funding so, so much of it. Okay, Julie? Mm -hmm. um, I don't have too much else to report. I attended uh, a lot of the meetings that have already been mentioned. Um, but Derek and I did have a chance to go over to the Avenue South development and had a tour and um, it was it was really good he, they've done such a good job on that project and a uh, beautiful property so hopefully he's able to sell those properties and perhaps build more in the future that's it uh, we have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sacker, resolved that pursuant to Section 152 3 of the Municipal Act, Council go in committee and close the meeting to the public. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay.